Welcome to uh, our support group at the Robert Boyson Oncology Institute. This is a special month because it's uh, October and uh, it's Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And I think that breast cancer has become such an inspiration for all the other types of cancer that we deal with because um, there has been so much information and awareness that has transformed the way that we think about breast cancer, the way that we diagnose breast cancer, the way that we accept it, and all this information has empowered women and their families to come together and share their feelings during treatment, uh, how they deal with it, how their family copes with it, and also what do we do after breast cancer. So um, I've always thought, why only breast cancer gets so much attention? And I come to realize that it doesn't matter which cancer gets more attention. If we get one cancer at a time, that should be enough for us to work and gradually cure and bring attention to different types of cancer that affect people. So I, I, I no longer feel that, why does breast cancer get more attention? I think, why don't we use the same model that we are using for breast cancer for other types of cancer and make things work? And because when you think about it, um, <clears throat> the way breast cancer was initially studied and the way it, it started years ago, uh, women you know, didn't feel comfortable talking about it. So first of all, it was kind of a taboo, and they would not talk until it was too late. And so we had women presenting with very advanced stages of cancer <clears throat> when there was little else to do. Um, it's, it's very interesting to see how uh, there was a prominent surgeon uh, back in the late 1800s, uh, Dr. Halstead, who was one of the first to describe in this country how to perform a mastectomy. And he was kind of the father of modern surgical techniques for breast cancer. And, you know, when you look at the history, the first mastectomy in the United States was done about 50 to 100 years after the first mastectomy was done in Europe. So there was a tremendous difference in, 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 in time and technology. But what was interesting is what, when the first mastectomy was performed here by Dr. Halstead, he not only pioneered how to do that technique, but also described all, all other important issues about surgery, of how to utilize anesthesia, uh, how to do uh, sterile procedures, and how important it was to um, close the tissues nicely, approximate them so that the scars wouldn't be as prominent. So a lot of work has come you know, since then. And Dr. Halstead was a proponent that breast cancer was a disease that started locally in the breast, like a little area, and that it spread order in an orderly, orderly fashion into the lymph nodes and other surrounding tissues, eventually spreading to other organs. And, and then some people, you know, now we're moving into the 1960s, 1980s, some people started questioning that and saying, well, breast cancer doesn't always start like that. Breast cancer doesn't always start like a little dot and it gets bigger and then goes to the lymph nodes. Sometimes women already show up with cancers in other places of their body. So how is it possible that it is, an or, it is something that should be orderly, but we find it that it's more aggressive in some women and it shows up in other areas? So they started thinking of other theories of, well, is breast cancer more of a systemic disease? When we talk about something systemic, it means, means something that's throughout the body. And they couldn't agree. They said there must be something in between the original theory that breast cancer starts in an orderly fashion and the theory that breast cancer is more of a systemic disease. <clears throat> but in up to the 1980s, they couldn't figure it out. 
And, and I'm not going to say that in 2013 we have figured everything out. But we have been able to identify a number of genes and more genetic testing. There is a, a project called the Human uh, Genome Project or Human Genome Atlas that's looking at identifying all of the genes in the human body. And with that, we've been able to find that breast cancer actually is a group of diseases, a group of illnesses, be behaves a little bit differently. But nowadays, we're being able to identify based on different genes and de different tumor markers which cancer is going to be aggressive and which cancer is not. So there was some truth to the thought that it was not either a, a localized orderly fashion disease and it was not all of them were systemic disease. There's actually a mixture of, uh, it's a spectrum of diseases in the middle. And nowadays, we, we are able to identify these a little bit with better certainty. And I know that in the future, with more research and more awareness, we're going to be able to do even better. Um, so there's, there's now categories, for example, the very famous triple negative breast cancer, which we know it's, it's, it's a very aggressive form of, of breast cancer. It, it's probably one of those that behaves more of a systemic disease, right? Because it, it's going to be a more aggressive type of cancer. But you also have women that present with what's called non-invasive breast cancer, something that's called DCIS, which is, is something that's going to behave very locally and just going to stay probably localized to the breast. Um, in addition to the genetic testing, uh, there are, you know, breast cancer, when I give these type of talks for different support groups, uh, there are cancers that you can only talk about one new research area that's being done or a couple of drugs that are being tested. For breast cancer, I can't just give you an update on one thing because breast cancer, there's many things that are going constantly. Uh, about research and newer things that are being investigated. So I can't get into detail of all of them, but um, one of the newest things is there's a new medication that uh, was just approved recently that uh, had been used for uh, treatment of cancer, metastatic cancer that had spread. Uh, now there's a new indication to use this medication for women with large uh, breast cancer. And by that we talk about something that's about a little bit larger than an inch that we know that they have a high incidence or high chance that this cancer is going to spread somewhere else, we can treat them with this medication ahead of time to kind of reduce the size of the tumor. This is not chemotherapy. And it doesn't mean that these women are not going to need chemotherapy, but it also helps reduce the size of the tumor. And it's the hope that it may lead us in a path that we're going to need less and less treatments in the future. Uh, we're not saying that that's what's going to happen, but just, just to show you, how much we're making progress with breast cancer, how we're constantly uh, finding new and different things that are uh, going to be of tremendous help in the future. When you look at the statistics of breast cancer, uh, there are statistics that show you how many women are going to de develop breast, breast cancer in a year. In this country, it's somewhere around 200,000 women, and, and still somewhere around uh, 40,000 women die of, of, of breast cancer each year. So it's not insignificant, it's a big number. And that's, that's talking about what's invasive breast cancer. If we add on the non-invasive breast cancers, which is the, what we normally call DCIS, there's about 50,000 extra cases. So total some, somewhere around 250,000 cases a year of breast cancer. But those, those are, you know, statistics that are not as interesting in my opinion, they're important, but one of the more recent statistics that I've seen is how many breast cancer survivors there are. And it is estimated that there's somewhere around two and a half to three million breast cancer survivors in this country. So that's amazing. That is amazing. And that is what is so important about these support groups and the, raising all the awareness about breast cancer because we have a lot of survivors out there and that's what we want. We want people to talk about your, their experiences. We want to understand more. We, have, we want to have more research and better, better treatment techniques so that we can do a better job. So I'm not going to uh, 
talk a whole lot more about this, but uh, as, as I've said to you before, I learn a whole lot from listening to your experiences and uh, listening to your questions. So I'm going to open this discussion to the floor, uh, have us share uh, our feelings, and um, let, let's see where this discussion takes us today. Okay?